The attempt to wipe away history, to wipe away old culture, because old culture is bad and we have better values now. And that stops right at the front door when it comes to rap. When it comes to hip hop and rap, I mean, any song that you pick up is going to be the most retrograde values that you ever heard. If you're a progressive and you listen to rap, I'm not sure exactly how you square that, frankly, because a lot of the stuff that's promoted in rap is mistreatment of women, treating of women as commodities, drugs, and the, the, the attempts to promote violence. I mean, look, all these messages are really bad and kids do, in fact, imbibe them. People uh, in the, uh, the black rap community have come out and said, look, this is just blatant cultural appropriation racism because you're accusing all their music that they produce of being about selling drugs, pushing guns, stripper poles, turning the sons into thugs and so on. What do you say to that criticism? Um, I think that there's, you know, there's all types of rappers out there. There's there's black rappers and white rappers and Asian rappers and Indian rappers, all types of rappers. And I don't think that uh, criticizing sort of the status quo of the genre or criticizing the prevalent content of the music. I don't I don't I don't agree that there's anything racist about that. Uh, yesterday, a Trump fan from Philly uh, de decapitated his father because his father was voting for Joe Biden. Mm. That's like vanilla ISIS. You can't tell me that in the culture that he claims that he stands for, that there's no violence in sex. You can't tell me that. Anyone who supports Trump, like Tom McDonald does in his music, after Trump's mugshot, after January 6th, after this man has been indicted for rape and has 91 felonies, you can't tell me about Blue Lives Matter. You can't tell me that you're about law and order. You're being a hypocrite. Boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. I gotta tell you guys, with success, comes jealousy and hate and there's going to be a whole lot of jealousy hate and wokeness in this video right here featuring woke trump deranged rapper talib kwali dj vlad and pierce morgan who are going to be having a conversation about the number one rap song on the itunes charts right now facts with tom mcdonald featuring ben shapiro and Obviously, there's a whole lot of hate towards this song from so-called black rappers in the black community because they don't like the fact that Tom McDonald and Ben Shapiro made a rap song criticizing the negative externalities of rap. And they're going to discuss this in this interview. And I want to react to it because it's as woke as you could imagine, okay? The amount of wokeness and Trump derangement syndrome in this interview is off the charts so i want to go ahead and get into it because it's going to take a while to get through this one so without further ado let's get it what is what is your objection yes. to this song well first of all um forgive my voice because i'm coming off tour my voice sounds a little scratchy forgive um, it. i want to congratulate cool, tom okay cool i want to congratulate tom uh mcdonald on his journey in sobriety um, because that's very important to note that part of his story is about his journey in sobriety. I do think it's very cowardly and very racist to blame hip hop for his addiction, um, as if white people don't have addiction issues. That's first and foremost. But if we're gonna talk about the song Facts uh, with Ben Shapiro, let's have a facts versus feelings conversation, which is something that Ben Shapiro always says. Mm. Um, the hook of the song is this ain't rap, which I agree with. It's not rap, it's not hip hop, has nothing to do with rap. Pierce, you're wrong. The song is not, has nothing to do with rap. Um, this song, he says, money, cars, clothes. We ain't selling drugs. We ain't gonna overdose. We ain't pushing guns. We're pro we ain't promoting stripper poles. We won't turn your sons into thugs and your daughters into hoes. This is not facts. He completely erased all conscious hip hop. You see, I got this shirt from Tribe Called Quest, one of the greatest rap groups of all time. He erased what I do. He erased what my, compa what my, what my people do. And uh, most of my friends don't rap about those things. Tom is lying about rap. Well, yeah, and, but hang uh, on. Okay, all right. That... Yeah, but hang on, hang on. Yeah, so before Pierce gets into this, I want to interject my opinion on what this guy has said thus far because, as you guys can see, this guy is pretty woke, okay? The wokeness is off the charts here. First and foremost, I don't think that Tom McDonald is erasing so-called conscious rap. I think what he's bringing attention to is the fact that if you're being intellectually honest about rap and what most rap is the rap that most people consume like for example if you go to any uh rap playlist on spotify that has the top rap songs in the country you're going to hear songs that promote the worst behaviors in our society you're going to hear songs that promote 
Degeneracy. Okay. Now he may do conscious rap, but conscious rap doesn't sell. Conscious rap is not charting. Conscious rap doesn't really make as much money as the degenerate rap. That's just the facts. Okay. So that's what Tom McDonald is talking about in his song. I don't think that he's trying to dismiss conscious rap, but the fact of the matter is, is that when you talk about consuming rap, most of the rap that is consumed nowadays promotes a lot of negative behaviors on our society and kids are affected by it in negative ways. Okay. It negatively affects the black community. You cannot dispute this. Okay. It is what it is. It's just a fact. Now, I don't know who, uh, Talib Kweli thinks he is to gatekeep rap because he's essentially saying that Tom McDonald's song is not rap. I'm not sure why he's saying that because his song is rap. Okay. Um, it's just a criticism of current and modern day rap. And I don't think that there's anything wrong with that. Just because he's criticizing rap, that doesn't make it not rap. It, it is rap. That's the genre. And rap, as he's acknowledging here, is diverse. There are different types of rap. But if we're being intellectually honest, the most popular rap songs in the country that are consumed, again, just go to any chart that has the top rap songs in the country at any given time, most of them are going to be promoting negative behaviors on society. Okay, that's the reality. And I think that that's what Tom McDonald is talking about. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm also, I don't mm -hmm. think he's saying all rappers do. In fact, he made a point of saying he doesn't mean all rappers or all hip hop stars. But there's well, no doubt, there's no doubt some on. do. There's he no made, doubt some he, do that. A vast majority. A <laughs> vast majority. And that's the facts. Again, just look at any chart with the top rap songs in the country. I guarantee you, you can't get through the top three of them without at least one of them mostly being composed of lyrics that promote degeneracy. In a point, of course, of course. And there's some country music artists and some heavy metal artists that participate in violent and sexual content. Mm -hmm. but yeah, but see, here's the thing. When you talk about those other genres of music, when it comes to the amount of degeneracy and negative behaviors that are promoted in uh, that music, um, it is not as prevalent, not nearly as prevalent as what you hear in rap. I guarantee you, if you go through the top country charts, the top rock charts, you're not going to hear songs in which a vast majority of the song is promoting degenerate behaviors. You don't have to worry about your kids listening to these songs and coming away with being influenced to do things that, again, are very degenerate and negative for society. And I'm not saying it doesn't exist at all. And again, this is not me being a fan of rock or country, anything like that. I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, I do listen to some country, okay? But um, I'm just being honest, okay? I'm being intellectually honest about the difference between rap as a genre versus some of these other genres and the amount of degeneracy in rap versus these other genres. And again, this is just the reality of it. I would never make a song, you know what I'm saying? Like he didn't specify that he meant some rap in the song. He specified that on your show right. when you question him. But on the song, he's saying, I'm trying to be offensive and I, I'm hoping to upset people. So guess what? As a black man, black man who does hip hop, I'm offended. If you were trying to offend me, well then you, good, you did a good job. To claim that rap or art is a cause of violence and a cause of uh, addiction in his life is irresponsible and hypocritical. When a bomb drops in a, in a nation, it falls on the just and the unjust. I watched a movie called Oppenheimer last night yeah. about a white man who made an atomic bomb that dropped on Japanese people because another white man genocided six million Jewish people. Killers of the Flower Moon is a movie about a great movie about a white man, white men who go and, and, and pillage and steal from Native American people. Uh, yesterday, a Trump fan from Philly uh, de decapitated his father because his father was voting for Joe mm. Biden. That's like, like vanilla ISIS. You can't tell me that in the culture that he claims that he stands for, that there's no violence and sex. Wow, this is probably one of the most idiotic arguments that I've ever heard in my life because I'm not sure exactly what any of the things he just brought up have to do with the topic at hand which is about music and different music genres and which ones promote degenerate behavior and which ones don't. Um, because it, to me, sounds like this guy has an issue with white people. I think he's trying to equate the U.S. dropping an atomic bomb on Japan 
uh, to end World War II with white culture. And I guess he's trying to argue that Tom McDonald is promoting white culture. But regardless, what he's doing here is he's deflecting, okay? He's using these examples that are irrelevant, these comparisons that don't make sense, uh, to deflect from the real conversation, which is that there's no other genre of music that promotes degeneracy the way that rap does. And he really can't argue that. And that's why he tries to rope in these examples that really don't make sense. These comparisons that are not relevant as an example of white culture to say, well, look, the whites dropped an atomic bomb on the Japanese. Therefore, they promote stealing and killing and doing all this stuff that you say the hip hop promotes. It's one of the most ridiculous things that I've ever heard. You can't tell me that anyone who supports Trump like Tom McDonald does in his music, after Trump's mugshot, after January 6th, after this man has been indicted for rape and has 91 felonies, you can't tell me about Blue Lives Matter. You can't tell me that you're about law and order. You're being a hypocrite. Okay. Okay, but again, what does Trump have to do with this? Okay, what does Trump have to do with the core argument, which is about the genre of music and whether or not most of the music promotes degeneracy and negative behaviors? It has nothing to do. Again, this guy is more obsessed with Tom McDonald's skin color, <laughs> white folks, and Trump than actually sticking to the real argument at hand because he really can't argue against it. But I'm not sure where Trump is going out and promoting drug use. I'm not sure where he's going out and promoting stealing, killing, robbing. I'm not sure where Trump is going out and promoting degenerate behaviors. I, 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 again, I, I think that is not fair to equate the obvious political persecutions against Trump as, well, Trump's not pro-law and order. Again, it's kind of ridiculous because Trump is, is not a criminal. He has not been convicted of any uh, crime. And the accusations against him, again, are political. Okay. Powerful words. Uh, DJ Vlad, you've been sitting there patiently. Uh, what do you make of all this? I mean, I agree uh, somewhat with Taleb Kweli, who's uh, also a friend of mine. Um, the problem is, is that when you talk about rap and you want to talk about the, the gangster lyrics, the violent lyrics, the drug lyrics, when you look at rap as a whole, when you look at the biggest rappers in the world right now, Drake, J. Cole, Kendrick Lamar, these guys aren't rapping about drugs. They're not talking about violence. They're not talking about... Uh, you know, beating women or whatever else. And I think a lot of times when you have these songs that try to generalize these types of things, you know, it kind of, it oversimplifies things and it gives rap in general a bad name. Well, I mean, look, again, it is true that some of the biggest rappers in the world, Drake, J. Cole, Kendrick Lamar, yes, their music is not as degenerate as, let's say, for example, a Cardi B or a Meg Thee Stallion or a Sexy Red, but their music does not compose uh, a majority of rap. Again, if you look at any rap chart, look at a majority of the songs. Um, there's a lot more other uh, songs on these playlists that you can hear. For example, like drill rap, uh, like rap that, again, does promote some of these bad behaviors, that does promote drug use. You're going to hear a lot of that, okay? Especially when it comes to uh, promiscuity. From women. If you listen to the top female rappers, listen to the top female rappers, almost all of their songs incentivize and promote behaviors that are bad for women. Okay. Almost all of them. Okay. They're all about F dudes, get money, sex. That's what they're all about. Sexy Red has little black girls across the country talking about the color of their genitalia. She has been extremely influential and these types of artists are pushed in front of kids' faces more so than people like a, a Talib Kweli who, you know, does conscious rap, and that's who they're being influenced by. That's where the criticism is coming from. Has nothing to do with racism, has nothing to do with, um, you know, black rappers or whatever, but reality is, is that you do have a vast majority of rap that does promote this type of stuff, and it's being pushed on people. It's the most popular stuff. Now, again, that doesn't mean that the top rappers in the world are necessarily pushing this to that level. But they don't make up a vast majority of the music either. They don't. You know, so it's kind of annoying. And, you know, listening to the song, you know, on face value, it doesn't sound like he's really saying anything wrong. But a lot of times when you, you know have these, these sort of white supremacist type of sayings, like, for example, all lives matter. <laughs> 
you know, from the outside looking in, of course, all lives matter. But it's really a shot at Black Lives Matter and kind of trying to undermine that type of thing. So I really don't like Vlad is ridiculous, right? He's one of the most ridiculous people because he's in the hip hop culture. And because he's not black, uh, they always criticize him uh, for not being black. They accuse him of trying to profit off of black culture. But he comes out here and says the most liberal and woke things all the time. But it will never be enough for the woke revolutionaries. The woke revolutionaries will never accept somebody like him because he doesn't have dark skin. Okay, He's not black enough. But yeah, he'll come out and say stuff like this okay, and accuse others of being racist when the real racists are the people that don't accept people like him because of him wanting to be in the rap industry. Again, it's pretty amazing. Like, you know, what we call in hip-hop sneak dissing. And I feel the song has a lot of sneak dissing. Tell him, would it be fair to say that hip-hop has moved to a, you know, for want of a better word, a better place? That it, it, the biggest stars no longer want to rap about stuff that caused all the offense. And actually, it's changed. Is that, is that accurate? See, see, I don't think that this should be a conversation with three white people and one black person about the state of hip hop and a refer. Wow, wow, incredible stuff. Again, this is what I'm talking about. These people who always boo, whine, and cry, cry about racism always re reveal themselves to be the biggest racist, right? They're the real racists in the room here. This guy says, well, I don't think that we should be having a conversation about hip hop with three white people. As if white people have no contributions to hip hop, okay? Rap is ex exclusively for black people. When I would argue that, you could argue that one of the greatest rappers ever is white. Eminem. Eminem, he's white. Who consumes a significant amount of rap and hip-hop music? White folks. Who buys a significant amount of the concert tickets? White people. In fact, without white people, a lot of these black folks in rap wouldn't be rich. You wouldn't be nearly as rich as you are because you damn sure not going to get that rich just off black folks. White people are the reason why you have the platform that you have. But yet, this guy is saying that, well, if you're white, you're not allowed to be a part of the conversation. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. For random on hip-hop. I think that's the wrong direction to go. One more thing I'm going to say about Donald Trump is that Tom McDonald is an immigrant. Wow. Donald Trump just said immigrants are poisoning our blood here in America. That's not what he said. He said illegal immigrants. Again, this guy's brain is on MSNBC. Donald Trump uses uh, white nationalist re rhetoric from Mein Kampf and Hitler all the time. And Again, this brain on MSNBC. Doesn't know what the hell he's talking about. Has no clue. He watched MSNBC. He's taking those talking points. He's regurgitating them. He didn't even listen to what Trump actually said. Guy is a supporter of his. Yeah, but this hang song on, is hang called on. Facts. Hang on, tell him, tell him, hang on. Mm -hmm. Listen, you can have your views about Donald mm -hmm. Trump. That's fine. And, and by the way, you can no, say... No, I said, I'm done. I'm done with that. I'm done with that. No. I'm done with that. That's no, why I'm going to the I song. I get it, but the idea that I'm not allowed to, or v DJ Vlad isn't allowed to, comment about hip-hop or rap is ridiculous. I didn't say that. I didn't you, say you that. Yes, you did. <laughs> That's exactly what you said. You said, well, I, we should be having this conversation. One black person, three white folks. That's that's exactly what you said. You you basically implied that, hey, white people shouldn't be at the table when it comes to a conversation about rap. That's what you said. That's what you implied, at the very least. And he'd said DJ it. Vlad. That, no, I didn't. Let me, let me be clear. DJ Vlad is a controversial figure in our culture. A lot of people accuse him of being a culture vulture. That is not a, a criticism that I personally agree with, although I do understand the argument. I work with, if, if, unbeknownst to a lot of people, I've done more songs with white rappers than any rapper you can name, any black rapper you can name. My next single is featuring Mac, uh, Mac Miller, rest in peace. I've worked mm -hmm. with Mac Lamore. I've worked with Ari the Rugged Man. There's no problem with white people in hip hop. There's a problem. And I will say about some of those white rappers, like for example, Mac Miller a criticism of him I think he promoted a lot of drug use a lot of drug use and it was negative and I think that that deserves criticism he ultimately lost his life over these behaviors that he promoted so again I think there's criticism all around whether you're white or black the criticism has nothing to do with racism as much as it has to do with the lyrics and the behaviors that are being promoted period because they're all white rappers that are promoting Bad behaviors.
dealing with racist white people in hip hop. Mm. And Tom McDonald's song is racist and is factually incorrect. And I could and I could break down what's factually incorrect in the song Facts. And I could break down how Ben Shapiro started his career by saying, rap, rap is it music? So you got somebody featured on your song who tweeted in 2019, fact, rap isn't music, and mm. if you think it is, you're stupid. Well, that person is clearly not an anti-racist, intelligent person. Tom McDonald <laughs> owes the hip-hop community an apology for putting someone on a song that in tw tw 20, 2009, writing for a white nationalist uh, site, Breitbart, wrote an article saying rap is crap. These people don't respect hip hop. Tom McDonald was making rap for people. Well, who I think don't you're missing. Like uh, look, I, I played some of this stuff back to Ben Shapiro yesterday. I think you're slightly missing the point. He's, he's lampooning the world of rap and hip hop. Oh, you I'm think not missing the point. You think there's, missing a, the point you think there's a lot of I, hypocrisy I'm, and I'm double standard clear. there. I, I'm very clear that Ben Shapiro is is lampooning hip hop. I'm very clear about mm. that. I'm not. I'm not under any. But even you, Tanner, look, this. even you must admit. When John Legend goes out of his way to rewrite the lyrics to mm -hmm. Baby It's Cold Outside because of the Me Too mm -hmm. campaign, because he thinks it's about sexual assault, but doesn't rewrite mm -hmm. any lyrics from any hip hop or rap song in the last 50 years, mm -hmm. you've got to admit, there is a ridiculous mm -hmm. double standard there, isn't there? I totally, I couldn't, I couldn't disagree more. I completely disagree. Really? With that because I think you're removing all. I think you're removing all social, political, and historical context that goes into creating hip hop and equating it with the social, political context that you goes into creating a Christmas song. You genuinely think "Baby It's Cold Outside" is is more offensive than anything that the I didn't say that. Listen, well, you I didn't, implied it. I didn't say that. I said, no, I didn't imply it. I said you are removing context to make a false equivalency. No, Please the context is very straightforward. Well, well, I'm not sure what the context of, for example, some Chicago drill rapper talking about shooting rival gang members or other black people i'm not sure what the context of that would be to make that acceptable but yet when you have a song that feminists are outraged about because they think it's about assault oh well i need to rewrite that because that's bad for society that's promoting a negative uh message but yet <laughs> the song about killing and stealing and robbing folks you don't need to rewrite that you don't need to put out some type of message or statement about that, implying that, hey, that's bad for society. Again, this guy is ridiculous, right? This guy is so ridiculous. Legend chose to rewrite the lyrics to Baby It's Cold no, Outside. No, I, I understand. But he didn't Pierce, rewrite Pierce, any Pierce. of the offensive, misogynist, violent Pierce, lyrics of his friends in the rap world. Pierce, I get, I get that that's how you feel, but you're feeling It's not a facts. feeling, it's a fact. And the facts is, oh no, that's not, well, it's, it's not a fact that it's, it's a problem. It's a fact that, that John Legend that. hasn't that's rewritten any lyrics of people in the hip-hop world. And it's not a... Pierce Morgan, John Legend is not your slave. He doesn't have to do it. Wow. He's not my slave, but he can be a hypocrite. <laughs> wow. Then, so he can't, he can't dispute what Pierce Morgan, is, Pierce Morgan is saying, like the clear and overt hypocrisy that he's bringing up here, which it, it is a valid point, okay? There's some songs that have to be rewritten because it's offensive, okay? It promotes negative behaviors, um, people get mad, but when it comes to rap, though, nah, we don't really need to address that. And part of the reason why is because they want to push rap on black people, on the younger generation. They want that negative influence there, okay? The type of negative influence that you get from rap. But regardless, this guy basically accusing uh, Piers Morgan of thinking that John Legend is his slave just because he's pointing out hypocrisy. Again, this is what the woke revolutionaries do. Anytime they're losing an argument, anytime they can't rebut somebody's argument and stick to the core subject matter, they pull the race card. Well, John Legend's not your slave, right? Again, what does that have to do with the actual argument? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. And then, then, then let's stop talking about John Legend because this is not about John Legend. Let's no, talk about you, the song Facts. All right, but you... Let's stop deflecting. I'm stop not deflecting, deflecting. And let's talk about the song Facts. Okay. Which is what this dude spent the whole interview doing, which is deflecting. Just like he's doing right now. He's literally deflecting from what Piers Morgan is, is bringing up, which is clear hypocrisy. Again, it's ridiculous. Okay, so can we get back to the Hang song on. Facts? Hang on. Let me, let me okay. bring in the DJ first, Vlad. He's been very... Lyric. Uh, Talib, there's, there's three okay. of us here. Let me bring in okay. DJ Vlad. You apparently, DJ Vlad, you're a culture mm -hmm. vulture. But what does that mean, first of all? Uh, uh, I mean, from my point of view, I think that's a slang for pretty much any white person in hip hop. Uh, I've seen every prominent white person in hip hop being called a culture vulture, from Steve Rifkin to Lior Cohen to Eminem also, to also Mac black Miller. People. Also, uh, black people get called culture vultures. Also, no, they don't. No, they do not. This guy is so disingenuous. When's the last time you ever heard a black person get called a culture vulture? Has Darius Rucker?
the country music star? Has he ever been called a culture vulture? <laughs> right? He's trying to uh, appropriate white culture. <laughs> Has anybody ever said that? Nobody's the only people that complain about that are black people who don't like white people uh, doing things that they feel are exclusively for black people better than them right that that is that is where that term is actually used the most okay when they allow white people to come into their space and the white people are more successful than them they get pissed okay and that's what happens to dj vlad because his interviews are wildly successful and people are pissed off about it because you don't have black people that are as successful as he is at these interviews right again it's just it's, it's amazing Black people get called culture vultures in this culture. culture. So it doesn't, it's not, not, it's not skin, skin color specific. Ridiculous. You can be a black no, it's or not. white it's not. culture it's not. vulture. Right, okay. All it's right. not. Absolutely. Am I Absolutely. a culture vulture? Right. But, but, but white people do get it. White people do get a little heavier than others. And, and I've never minded being That's called. right. Because for, for white people, fine. that's, that's, sure exactly, I, I, that's exactly I, I, right. That's exactly right. Because white people are the dominant yeah. group. It, that's how it goes. Racism wow. is not logical or convenient for anybody. Sorry. Wow. Well, I mean, white people are the dominant group in you. Hang on, hang on. White people are not the dominant group in music anymore. This guy is such a victim, bro. I mean, I don't understand. Like, how are you a famous rapper? He's probably a multimillionaire. And you have such a victimhood mentality when it comes to life. You're so obsessed with the white man. You're obsessed with victimhood. I don't get it. I don't understand it. I really don't. I, I would really hate to be this guy, okay? I, I think he has some problems that he needs to address internally. But again, it really makes me sick when you have people that are successful in this country and they want people to boohoo, whine, and cry victim all the time. I would say most of the uh, yes, biggest stars yes, in the world are. right yes, now they are. are not white. White people own all of the record companies. White people own all of the record companies, Pierce. That's true. Well, White I had people, that conversation with Kanye. I had that conversation with Kanye, and he felt very strongly about it, and right. I had that conversation with him, and he, he may have mm -hmm. a point about that. White people own all of the But it doesn't the change the account. fact That's that fact. many of the biggest and most successful and richest music artists in the world right now are black. That mm -hmm. is also true. All right, well, let's, cha let's change places. How about we get all the money and y'all get to tap dance? How about that? I don't think you're short of a few, Bob, are you? Wow. What'd you say? I don't think you're short of a few bob, as we'd say in England. You've got a few dollars up your sleeve. Um, it does the money is not a, is not about is not about whether or not one individual makes it. I am an exception to the rule. The vast majority of my people are not rich people. And that's a fact. And I'm an exception to the rule because I make money doing conscious underground hip hop. I'm not doing pop hip hop. I'm not uh, appealing to a MAGA fan base. I'm not, a, I'm not, I, I don't rap about materialism, misogyny. I don't do any of that. So okay. I'm the exception to the rule. Time? Yeah, you're, yeah. So you're acknowledging that your genre of rap is not as prevalent or popular as all the other rap out there. MAGA rap is also not that prevalent or popular as all the rap out there. But the most prevalent versions of rap that we hear are degenerate, right? I mean, I'm just keeping it 100, okay? So this guy is acknowledging that, yeah, I'm not really that popular. So I'm an exception to the rule, right? And also, if you got a problem with white folks owning everything, then, I don't know, hey, maybe encourage people to have their own record labels. And that's what people are doing. It's actually changing now. You have people that are making a lot of music that are doing things on their own without having the white man own all of it. Okay? I mean, that, I mean it, it is what it is. It's changing. But again, this victimhood mentality here is sad. It's sick. It really is. It's good to have you on the program. Come back. I've enjoyed this debate. Well, hold on. Hold on. Hold well, on. I've got to move on. on. I want to... I want to... Okay, but I want to I want to say that Ben Ben Shapiro has a history of racist comments. Yeah, you said and that. And for but Tom McDonald, you, you know what? Okay, Listen. well then y'all y'all should acknowledge that. Okay, you've said your, you said your bit, uh, DJ Va. Thank you for coming uh, back on. Please come again soon. I enjoyed that debate. Thank you. Wow, incredible stuff. Anyways, let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.